In this video, we're going to learn about command line arguments in C++. So when we run programs or commands from the shell, we can supply command line arguments. So for example, here I could have mkdir video, where mkdir is a command or a program and video is an argument to this command. It's giving the command information about what to do. In this case, to make a directory called video. Programs written in C++ can also accept command line arguments. In order to implement this, we'll need to add two parameters to our main function. We'll have here int argc and car star argv and then open bracket, close bracket. So this first parameter here, argc, is going to be set to the number of command line arguments received, including the name of the program itself. And car star argv, open bracket, close bracket, is an array of pointers to C style strings, where each string is a command line argument beginning with the name of the program itself. Let's go over these. So the first thing we'll do is output argc. Waf we'll here, c out, and then argc colon, and then argc followed by an inline. We'll save this and then compile our program. And if I run the program with dot slash D, we'll get here argc1. If I run the program with dot slash D, a1, we get argc2. If I run the program with dot slash D, a1, a2, we now get argc3. So argc is going to be set to the number of command line arguments, including the actual program itself, and that's argc. Now argv, is going to be set to an array of pointers to strings, where each string is one of these command line arguments beginning with the actual program name itself. Let's output some of these strings. We'll have here C out, and we'll have argv at the index zero, colon, and then argv at the index zero, followed by an end line, and we'll have C out argv at the index one colon, and we'll output argv at the index one followed by an inline. We'll save this and compile our program and run it with dot slash d and a one. And we get here argc two, and that argv at the index zero is our program dot slash d, and argv at the index one is the argument a one. And we could keep going like this and access and output more command line arguments. So we could have C out argv at the index two colon, and then output argv at the index two, followed by an end line. And if we save this and compile our program and run it with dot slash d a one a two, we now get here argv at the index zero is dot slash d and we get the arguments a1 and a2 at the indexes one and two. So argv is an array of pointers to C style strings. So it looks like this, where argv at the index zero is a pointer to a string stored in memory made up of the characters dot and then slash and then D. And then there's the null terminator character that ends the string. And we get the same sort of C style strings for argv at the index one and argv at the index two. Now we could write this second parameter as car star star argv, and this will actually work the same way. So if we save this and compile the program and run it with dot slash d a one a two, we'll get the same result as before. And that's because in C++, when we pass arrays to functions, really we're passing a pointer to the first element in the array. So car star star argv is equivalent to car star argv open bracket close bracket. I do prefer this format here though because it makes it clearer that argv is an array of pointers to strings. Now, one thing we may want to do is check to make sure our program has received the correct number of command line arguments. Because for example, 
if we try to run the program with dot slash D, A1, we'll get here a segmentation fault error. And that's because we're trying to use argv at the index two, but argv at the index two is not set to a string. What we could do is check argc to make sure the correct number of command line arguments have been received. So here we could have if argc is equal to three, then we'll output the command line arguments here. Otherwise, we'll output an error message. We'll have here C out exactly two arguments required, followed by an inline, and we'll return negative one as an error status. We'll save this and compile our program. Then if we run it with dot slash D A1, we'll get here exactly two arguments required. If we run it with dot slash D A1 A2, now we get the expected output. We could also use argc to iterate over some unknown number of command line arguments. So for example, we could have here a loop. We could have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than argc and i plus plus. So here, i is going to go from zero up until, but not including argc by one with each loop iteration. So i is going to go over each index in the argv array that's been set to something. Then we'll output here argv open bracket. Then we'll output i followed by close bracket and then is equal to we'll output argv at the index i followed by an end line. So if we save this, and then compile our program. If I run it with dot slash D A1 A2, we'll get dot slash D A1 and A2. If I run it with dot slash D A1 A2 A3 A4, now we get dot slash D and A1 and A2 and A3 and A4. Now one thing I should mention is that quotes and double quotes can be used to create command line arguments with spaces. So for example, if here I had dot slash D and then double quote and A1, A2, and A3, and then double quote, instead of three separate arguments with double quote A1 and then A2 and then A3 double quote looking something like this, this here becomes a single argument. We get here A1 space A2 space A3. It works the same way with single quotes. So for example, if here I had dot slash D and then A1, A2, and then A3. Here, A1 and A2 are put together in the same argument. So single quotes and double quotes can be used to create arguments with spaces. Now the strings of argv are C style strings we could convert them to C++ string objects if we want to take advantage of the methods in C++. So for example, we could have here string and then convert one and we'll pass it argv at the index one, which is the first proper command line argument. And this here is going to convert this string to a C++ string called convert one. We could output that string with C out and convert one colon, and we'll output convert one followed by an inline. And now we can use C++ string methods. So we could have here C out and length colon and convert one dot length followed by an inline. We could save this and compile our program. And if we run it with dot slash D arg one, We'll get here that convert one is arg one and the length is four, which is correct. So this is how we can use command line arguments in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.